What is up, guys? Welcome back to the latest episode of The Bench Mob. I am your host, Ian Lynch. I'm going to mix it up today. As you can see, clearly, Jake is not here. Um, Jake has graduated, so now the segment is just myself. But I do have an awesome surprise and treat for you guys. I am joined today by Luke Cheney from South Beach Sports. Um, Luke, why don't you give a quick introduction and let everyone know what you're working on? Yeah, so what's going on, everyone? I'm Luke. Um, I'm the co-founder of South Beach Sports. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. You guys can look that up. I also um, started a second channel called Swish Talks, which is just basically me and my friend Matt. We give just a bunch of NBA content. Uh, I also, I'm also going to start writing on OvertimeHeroics.com for the Atlanta Hawks. So go ahead and check that out. All right. That's awesome. Um, so getting into it, we are down to the final two teams. The final start tomorrow. It is the Milwaukee yep. Bucks versus the Phoenix Suns. It's been a long time since both teams have been in the finals. So it's a huge deal. Um, but there are some key storylines heading into this matchup. Of course, obviously, the probably the most talked about one is Giannis and whether or not he's going to play. Um, so what are you hearing so far in that area? And what do you think is going to happen with that? So with Giannis, I mean, obviously, when he got hurt, it looked devastating. I mean, his entire knee just like bent backwards. Mm -hmm. It looked awful. But surprise. Surprisingly, it was only a hyperextension of some sorts. So what we've been hearing as of late is that Giannis is like trying to fight, trying to push through it, and he might play game one. What I think, personally, I think the Bucks might rest him for that game one just so they have him for the rest of the series. But yeah, it's Giannis is, um, in, what, what's happened with Giannis's injury is just so surprising considering how bad it looked. Yeah, for sure. Um... You mentioned how they may potentially rest him in game one. I honestly think that would probably be the best route. It gives him an extra day of rest. And um, also, you don't want to re-aggravate any injury too soon. And the Bucks proved that they can still dominate even without Giannis. Middleton popped mm -hmm. off and outscored the Hawks by himself in the third quarter. You have Brooke Lopez, who was playing out of his mind the last couple games to close out that series. So what do you think in that regards? Yeah, so I mean, I have to give a ton of credit to Coach Mike Boonholzer for the Bucks. Uh, I've been a huge doubter of him. I even I even made a video titling uh, "Why the Bucks Won't Win a Championship" just because I did not trust Mike Boonholzer at all. But since Game One of the Hawks series, he's really elevated his coaching. Uh, as you guys have seen, well, as you guys saw in Game One, the Bucks just let Trey Young do whatever he wanted on pick and rolls. We saw the, um, the Bucks usually have Brooke Lopez and uh, Bobby Portis in a lot of drop scenarios instead of switching on defense. And what we saw throughout the series is the Bucks switching more and more. We even saw in game, uh, game seven, the Bucks were just switching everything. They even had Brooke Lopez switching us to the perimeter, which we've never seen from them before. So I think with this coaching on defense, and especially the, uh, the extra involvement of Brooke Lopez on offense, I like how uh, Boonholzer is using Lopez as not only just a shooter, but as, as using him in a multitude of ways. We see Lopez being used in that low post area as, as, as a post scorer, and we see him a lot more as a roller. He had 33 points in game six. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting to watch how Mike Boonholzer has elevated his coaching. For sure. Um, so looking ahead into this series, there are some fun matchups to look at. Um, so the first one I want to talk to you about is Chris Paul versus Drew Holiday. You have Chris Paul. People have been calling him point God against mm. Drew Holiday, who's probably one of the best lockdown defenders in the league. Um, so what are you looking forward to in this matchup? Man, I'm looking forward to seeing if Chris Paul can, I would say, rebound from his somewhat lackluster Western Conference final series. He obviously exploded in game six. He had 41 points. But throughout that series, I remember his shooting splits before game six was something like 30. He shot 32% from the field, 13% from three. And he was, he was being guarded by the likes of Reggie Jackson uh, and players like that, uh, who are obviously not the perimeter defenders that Drew Holiday is. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to see that, um, the, that offense defense matchup between uh, CP3 and Drew Holiday. For sure. Yeah. Um, Chris Paul's just been playing out of his mind. He looks like he's 20 years old again. No, um, this is arguably probably his best season 
ever. Um, and I just can't believe, I mean, this is kind of off topic, but I can't believe how little recognition people are giving him. You saw what he did when he left Houston and went to the Thunder. He made them a competitive team, and now he's doing it again with the Suns. So I definitely think CP3 deserves a lot more respect than what he's getting from the league. And yeah. I finally think some people around the league are starting to take notice, even though it's year 16. And um, I'm just so excited for him to finally get a chance at the championship because that's oh, yeah. probably the one thing he's missing from his resume at, to be a Hall of Famer. Other than that, like he pretty much has any other accolade that you would need. And even without a championship, he's still a Hall of Famer. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard, like, when you have a championship, it's hard to argue against that. So I'm definitely looking yeah. forward to that matchup. The second one is you know, shooting guard position. You have uh, Booker versus Middleton. Uh, what do you think about that? So again, uh, Devin Booker struggled somewhat in that Western Conference final series. The Suns as a whole really didn't play that great, in my opinion. They benefited a lot from Kawhi Leonard obviously being out. But I'm really looking to see if Devin Booker can rebound and just play like he usually does in his first finals matchup. The thing with Chris Middleton is that his play is very, very inconsistent. Uh, Sometimes we see him have these 38, 40-point outbursts like he did in, I think, game six against the Nets. And I think it was game seven against the uh, the Hawks. Mm -hmm. He he has these 38, 39-point outbursts that you just look at him and he's like, and you're like, wow, that is a true true score especially next to someone like Giannis but then there's these other games where Middleton's not that aggressive he doesn't look for a shot like in game one I mean Middleton had a mismatch on him the entire series he was getting guarded by Kevin Herter Bogdan Bogdanovich players who are not the greatest of defenders and in game one Middleton did not look for a shot at all so I really want to see if Middleton will be more aggressive early on this series compared to last series and if he can find more consistency with his play for sure, yeah. Like you mentioned, he's very inconsistent. We talked about the popping off at random moments. So, honestly, I think if Giannis isn't able to play, Middleton's going to be the guy who has to step up the most. So, it's going to be really interesting to w- watch. Um, I mean, even if Giannis plays, he's not going to be 100%, so Middleton's still going to have to step up, step up. So, it's going to be really exciting to watch. The last matchup that I thought was really interesting is – Jay Crowder versus PJ Tucker. They're kind of cut from the same cloth. They're the, the gritty, um, take no nonsense type player right in your face all the time. Um, overall, I just think that's going to be really fun to watch. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, these two guys are just enforcers. That I'm, that's, that's about like what you can say about them. Uh, they're both, like, like you said, get in your face. They're tough defenders. P.J. Tucker did a tremendous job of guarding KD in that semifinal series. Jay Crowder has played such a huge role for the Suns all season long as not only a defender, but as a shooter. I believe he leads the Suns in three-pointers. And just to draw back a little bit to the Heat, because I'm a Heat fan, the, the, Jay, the Heat missed Jay Crowder this past season. They missed his tenacity. They missed his toughness. And that's exactly what Jay Crowder brought the, brought the Suns this year. So it'll be really interesting to see how these two similar players will uh, face off against each other. Yeah, for sure. Piggybacking off what you said about the Heat missing it. I genuinely think that's one of the main reasons why the Heat got swept by the Bucks was they didn't have that lockdown defender. He was a huge crucial part in locking down Giannis last season when the Heat went on that run in the bubble. Um, it's going to be fun to watch him potentially get back to that matchup again if Giannis is able to play. But... Like we've said, like that's yet to be determined. But um, lastly, we are going to get in to our predictions for the series. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is going to win? How many games? And let's add, just, just for fun, let's add who you think the finals MVP might be. Got it. So... I'm going to give two series predictions because I think it's based, I think the, my series prediction is based off heavily of one scenario if Giannis plays or not. Mm-hmm. So let's just say if Giannis doesn't play this series, I would have Suns in six. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that Milton and Holiday are consistent enough to really carry the scoring load in a finals matchup. And let's say if, um, if Giannis does end up playing, which I think will end up happening, then I have the Bucks in six. 
Uh, a lot of this is um, reliant on Coach Budenholzer opting for more switches than drop coverages. The Suns love to use drop. Um, the Suns love to use pick and rolls. CB3 is obviously one of the best pick and roll ball handlers in, in the entire league and throughout history. And so that's going to be one interesting matchup to watch. So my finals MVP prediction, man, um, I, I think that a lot of this is narrative based. So I think we might see someone like Chris Paul win it just because CP3, you know, it's 36, 37. But I'm, I, I want to lean a little bit towards DeAndre Aiden. He's played tremendous this playoffs. He's, he was probably the best player for the Suns in the Western Conference Final Series. And he's really taken that next step to becoming a potential top five center in the league. So I'm going to say DeAndre Aiden deserves it, but I think CP3 is going to end up winning Finals MVP. Yeah, I, if, if if the Suns win, if the Bucks, sorry, if the Bucks win, um, Bucks win the championship, then I have Giannis winning Finals MVP. For sure. No, yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's a lot of what's going on in the league is narrative based nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. just because like the media likes to take these stories and run with it. But um, so like you said, I do. I will give two based off Giannis, obviously, because that's a huge, huge factor. Um. I definitely think no matter what, though, it's going to go to either a six or seven. Like, it's not going to be Suns and four or Bucks and four. Like, no. this is going to be – I know that's trending right now, uh, Suns and four, but I just – no. The, like, the Bucks aren't going to let that happen. Um, I'll do – if Giannis doesn't play, I think I, I agree with you where it's Suns and, Suns and six. Um, if Giannis does play – I don't think he's going to be at 100%, no matter how hard he tries to play. So I think even if he plays, I'll do Bucks and seven. Just Bucks because, and seven. Just because, like, I, if he plays, you know he's going to make some kind of impact. So, mm -hmm. they're, like, whether they use him as a decoy to get someone else open or whatever they plan on using him for mm -hmm. is yet to be seen. But – that could be a potential option for them, especially since they know like, Hey, like you don't want to make this worse. So we're going to use you as a decoy to get other people open shots because Gian Giannis is a decent passer. So there yeah. is that option. But um, as far as MVP, I agree with you. Aiton probably deserves it the most if the Suns win, but Chris Paul would probably win it just because like you said, he's 36, it's season 16. He went from, Houston where people were like oh is Chris Paul actually the issue when all that beef was going on with James Harden then you see he goes to the Thunder he makes them competitive and everyone's like oh maybe James Harden was actually the issue and then you have him coming down to the Suns this season and leading a team that I don't think anyone saw them come. I mean people people saw like potential when they went on that 8-0 run in the bubble they were like okay maybe like yeah. They may, they'll make the playoffs, but they're not making it past the first round. But they acquire Chris Paul. You have everyone learning from him and his high IQ. Um, you have Devin Booker being able to play more off ball, which I think helps him a lot with Chris Paul, that he doesn't have to be the primary ball handler and uh, distributor. So I think that helps him a lot. So um, I would have to agree with you that Chris Paul probably wins MVP if they win and Giannis if the Bucks win. So, yeah, also watch out for the bench matchups. The Bucks have lost some of their depth uh, throughout the playoffs. Obviously, uh, Dante DiVincenzo has been out for the playoffs. And this has a very strong bench with campaign, Dario Sarge, Torrey Craig, especially campaign. He's been playing out of his mind throughout these playoffs. It's been super surprising. He's earned himself a huge contract this offseason. He's, he's an unrestricted free agent this uh, upcoming free agency. So that's something to watch. For sure. Yeah, that was an excellent point. Um, kind of hate that I forgot that, but the, the bench is huge because the starters can only do so much, especially with Giannis now hurt. So that's another big blow to the Bucks. So who's going to step up? I guess that's the biggest question of the series. Yeah. Well, Luke, thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. I really Thanks appreciate for having me. it. Um, 
like we mentioned earlier, check out South Beach Sports and all the stuff they're doing over there and all the other stuff that Luke's working on. I'll be sure to attach it in the description. I'll see you guys next time. See you later.